Hi everyone, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, as well as the next tutorial, we'll be constructing this lower third text reveal. And in doing this, we'll learn how the trap code particular designer window, which is right here, as well as the effect controls found right within After Effects right here, how these two areas work together. We'll cover the designer window in a little bit more detail, going through the different areas such as the blockchain, the block settings over here, block presets, as well as talking about single and multi-system presets. And then using what we've learned, we'll construct this lower third reveal in the next lesson. So I'll create a new composition. And I'll create a solid so I can apply particular, because particular is an effect and it needs something to be applied to. So I'll go to Effect, RG Trap Code, and apply Particular. Now I'm just going to copy and paste the text that I created in the previous composition. There's nothing special about this, it's just using the text tool in After Effects, and there is a linear wipe revealing the text. We're keeping it pretty simple here. So the first thing I'm going to do is animate the emitter position so that it moves along with the reveal of the text. So let me move to the point where the end of the text is revealed, right about there. And that's where I want my emitter position to end in terms of its animation. Now just to clarify, the emitter refers to the area in which particles are born. And our next lesson will go into much more detail about the emitter. But the thing to understand right now is emitter controls define where the particles are born, as well as the area in which they are born. So they can be from a single point or a much larger area than a single point. But right now, we're going to keep the default of a point as the emitter type. But I'll go to the position control right here and set the position of my particles to be at the very end of that text. Now I'm going to want to create a keyframe for that, so I'll go over here to the position parameter and click on the stopwatch next to the word position. I'll rewind to the beginning, and we want this to move along with the animation of the text. So I'll go to the position parameter right here and simply click on the X value and drag this backward. I'll click on the designer button right here to launch the trap code particular designer. And what we can see is that we've got an interactive environment that plays back my particle settings in the preview area up here. Down here, we can see that we've got a series of blocks. Notice as I select any of these, we see the related parameters for that block. For example, if I select particle type, We'll see all the parameters that relate to the overall look of the particle, the particle type, lifespan, blend mode, that kind of thing. These blocks will also change as you make changes to the parameters. For example, if I change the color of the particle, the thumbnail will update down here. If I load perhaps a different size over life graph or I change the particle type. The blocks will update giving you a visual indication as to what's going on with your settings. I'm actually going to go to this emitter type right here and move the position up to the center so it's not sitting down at the bottom of my screen. If I double click one of these blocks, this will reveal a block preset drawer showing presets for the block that I've selected. For example, I can click on directional to load a directional emitter preset for this block. If I double click on the color block, this will reveal some gradient presets as well as custom blocks that I've saved down here. Any changes that I make to a block can be saved back to that library simply by right clicking and selecting save block or up in the block settings right here with this icon. Now if I reveal the presets, we'll see it down here in the custom presets section. I can open and close these simply by tapping B on the keyboard, double clicking to open and double clicking to close or I can simply roll over that section with my mouse. You'll notice some of these blocks are actually grayed out. Now, these first few blocks, such as the emitter type and the motion, particle type, color, etc., these are things that we always have settings defined for. We always have some sort of size and opacity defined for our particle. But over here, in sections that we'll cover in a lot more detail later on, some of these are simply off, and they don't have any effect right now. 
such as gravity. So if I go to the physics section and select gravity, and I turn this up, particles will begin to accelerate downward. And you'll notice this gravity block goes from grayed out to color, and this is indicating that I've enabled gravity. As I've mentioned before, I can double click on this gravity block and look at different presets I've got in here. And if I load the negative gravity block, that has a custom image loaded to indicate that the gravity is actually flowing upward. Now I'll reset this block simply by right clicking and say reset block values and it'll go back to its grayed out state. Now don't worry that I'm going through all these sections very quickly. We'll be going through each of these individual sections in much greater detail later on. Now before we go into those different sections in more detail, there's still a few more things in the designer. In fact, these are some things that are really quite powerful. Now I'm going to reveal the presets drawer, just like the blocks drawer, by hitting P to show my presets. Now you're going to notice that there are two different types of presets multiple system presets, and single system presets. Now it might be a bit obvious if I say that multiple system presets are presets that contain multiple systems, but we haven't actually discussed what the idea of multiple systems is. So let me load a preset here. As I scrub around in the preview area, we'll see that we've got a few different things going on. We've got some sort of streaky particles, and we've got some more spherical particles. We've got larger particles and tiny particles, lots of things going on. We're able to do complex presets like this by using multiple particle systems. You'll notice down here as I loaded this preset, we have not just this master system with one set of blocks, but you'll notice as I click further down, that we have actually six different particle systems. And this is what a multi-system preset is. It's a system that uses multiple particle systems inside one instance of the particular plugin. Now here's where we get into the heart of how systems work in TrapCode Particular. If I select system two here, you'll see that there's a bit of a connection between the master system and system two. You'll also notice that system two is actually missing a few different blocks. Now, what is happening here is that when systems do not have a block present, they will inherit those settings from the master system. So in other words, system two will inherit its motion, direction, that kind of thing from the master system. So multiple systems allows us to have different systems dedicated to very subtle things or very specific things. So I can actually see exactly what system two is doing by soloing it. So if I option click on system two, we can see that it's some glowy sphere particles and it has its own gravity dragging them downward. But everything else is not actually using some gravity. So we can see System 2 has this section here with some particles falling downward. But the other systems are actually kind of floating freely. Let's say I hop down to System 4 and solo this. We can see that this is actually what we call a streaklet particle. And this gives us this sort of light streak kind of look. So this allows us to combine different systems that share the same emitter position and can either have their own settings or share settings between systems. It's really quite powerful and very flexible and really, really fun to play with. So that is what a multiple system preset is. Single system presets are still actually quite handy. Now, the way this works with multi-system presets is that single system presets will allow us to load a preset into an individual system. So at this point, I have system four selected and I go to single system presets and I click on something like the orange stars preset. That's going to load that single system preset into system four. I'm going to hit undo and get back to the original preset here. If I'd like to load this in addition to my existing systems, in other words, add this single system preset to uh, system five, I can simply option or alt click on this. Now I've loaded this into system five. You could also manually do this by simply adding a system right here and going to the single system presets and loading that preset right there. There's one important point that I want to bring up with regard to this designer window, 
and the effect controls in After Effects. Now I clicked Apply and actually I moved my emitter position up to the middle so it's actually animating from that lower left up to the middle, which is fine. I just want to show over here in the After Effects effect controls that we also have the ability to select different systems. Also, we have the ability to solo them or turn them on or off simply by clicking the visibility icons next to the system. Now, one thing to take note of, when the system does not have a block for a parameter, it will inherit it from the master system. So when I go to After Effects, and I look at this system, let's say I have system two, it will not have those related parameters here in the effect controls. So we do not see color or opacity in particle system two. In this case, particle color and opacity are being defined in the master system. So if I go to the particle right here and change this from this sort of gold to a purple, we're going to see that a lot of these systems are now starting to inherit this color from that one system. It looks like we've got that one particle system at the bottom that has its own color setting. Yep, system five is using an orange color, which in this case doesn't actually look that bad. But if I wanted system five to inherit that same uh, bluish purple, I can simply delete the block. And now everything is using that one unified color. So I talked about resetting your particle system right down here using the reset button, but just to the right of that is the actual preset name, and this is where we save our preset. So if I click on this and save this, this is going to be a multi-system preset, and this will show up in our multi-system presets section down here under custom, and we have our particle preset right here that I can instantly load. Single system presets are simply saved by using the pop-up menu right here. You'll notice I can delete, duplicate, solo systems, reset them, or save them as a single system preset. This is really handy for blockchains that you want to reuse over and over. I'll give you a good example of this. So I'm going to reset this down to just the basics right here. And I'll go to the size block and have these fade out over time and give this just a slightly different color. Maybe a, a purple. I'll select the particle type and set the blend mode to screen so they look a little bit more interesting and bring up the overall particle size. Make the size random and maybe randomize the color a little bit. Again, we'll cover all this stuff in more detail later on. But let's say I have something like this and I want to make it just a little bit more interesting. I'm going to load in this orange stars preset by option clicking on that. And what this is, is just a sim simple single chain that has a fairly large particle with a very short lifespan. See, it's 0.2 seconds. This adds sort of an illuminated orange tip to the particles as I draw them on. But it has just a little bit of a particle trail because it's using something called the aux system, which emits particles from the main particles. And we'll cover that in more detail later on. But that's a good example of sort of embellishing your particle settings by simply loading another system in, in addition to your main system. I'll load one more preset in here for this last part. Right here, we have some very useful tools for uh, changing our view in the preview area. One is a camera tool. So I can click on this camera icon. And if I click up here in the preview area, I can orbit around and look at my particles from differing angles. Just like in After Effects, I can hit the C key to pull up different types of camera tools. Now I'm going to click on the reset button just to the left of that. So we have our orbit tool. If I hit C again, we have an X and Y tool that will move the camera up, down, and left and right. And if I hit C again, this will zoom in in Z. This is a Z dolly. I can reset that by clicking on the icon to the left of the camera. And if I click on the camera again, this will uh, get me out of that camera tool. And now I am back in my emitter scrub. Now there's a little divider line to show us that these three icons over here are a little bit different, not related to the camera information. One is the motion blur. I'll simply reset this, go to my motion block, turn up the velocity. 
Now, no matter what your settings are in After Effects or in particular, in particular has some of its own motion blur controls, we need to turn on motion blur rendering by clicking on this icon here. Motion blur can be very expensive in terms of rendering, so it does default to off, but if you'd like to see how things look with it on, you can click on this button to, to enable it. Same goes for depth of field. Now, depth of field is actually going to be inherited from the camera information that you have in your composition. So I'm actually going to quickly duck out of the designer here real quick. I have a camera in my composition. I have depth of field enabled, and I have a very high aperture. We'll see some very dramatic depth of field if I enable it. So if I go back, and I'm going to load a preset that shows us some pretty dramatic depth of field. Uh, let's move our camera just a bit so we can get these particles really close to the camera. My composition has depth of field enabled, but my designer window is not rendering depth of field because I've not turned it on. So if I click on this depth of field icon, we can see that the render gets a little bit slower, but we have this deep depth of field where the particles close to the camera are very blurry, as well as far away from the camera, they're very blurry, and in the middle they're in focus. Lastly, the one that you're probably not going to use as much, but this is just a motion preview toggle. This will toggle between rendering the actual particle type and blend mode. If I click on this button right here, it will simply render a single pixel using the color that we've defined. So that's an overview of the designer. As you can see, it's a very powerful window and allows us to visually organize a very complex particle system. So in the next lesson, we will move forward with starting to learn about all this stuff in much greater detail by assembling that lower third that we were talking about. So my name is Harry Frank. We'll see you in the next lesson.